Odds are, you've been enchanting your armor wrong in Minecraft. With 7 different materials, 4 protection enchantments, and a whole bunch of other enchantments to choose from, most players don't have a clue how to make the best armor possible in Minecraft. I bet you didn't even know you could create camouflage using armor trims. There are so many secrets kept intentionally hidden from the public by the best Minecraft players when it comes to creating the best set of armor possible. I spent days compiling real data and testing every variety of armor to better understand Minecraft's armor system in order to give you the answers to these questions in this video. Let's start with the easy stuff. Before you can begin applying enchantments to your armor, you have to consider which material you want to use. Based solely on damage reduction and durability, leather is the worst armor you can equip, followed by gold then chainmail. Iron armor is cheap and ideal for the early game, but not worth investing in the long run, so don't bother enchanting it. Diamond is excellent in comparison, but netherite is by far the best. But wait, let's dive deeper here. It's not as simple as choosing the armor with the most protection and durability, as each material has its very own unique properties. For starters, gold armor is very useful when traversing the newer 1.16 nether because piglins will not immediately attack any player wearing at least one piece of gold armor. Similarly, leather boots are useful in the overworld because they allow a player to stand on powdered snow. And while turtle helmets only provide the same protection as iron armor, they have more durability and provide some temporary water breathing effects so they can be extremely useful in underwater combat scenarios. Netherite armor is also special because it will not burn in fire or lava in case you have an accident in the nether and won't lose any durability when taking fire damage. Netherite armor is also more likely to get high level enchantments from an enchantment table similarly to gold. Speaking of which, the relationship between diamond and netherite armor is something that is often misunderstood. While netherite is objectively the better material to make your armor out of, it may not be for the reasons you're thinking of. The most common assumption players make about netherite is that it provides significantly better protection than diamond armor. This is actually somewhat false. Netherite only offers a slight advantage. After 6 hits from a zombie with the sharpness sword, I was left at 3 hearts wearing maxed out netherite armor compared to 2 hearts and diamond. This 1 heart difference could be useful to consider, but the real reason netherite is considered the better material is because of its increased durability and knockback resistance. A full set of netherite armor on average will last around 10% longer than diamond armor. Because of this, it's important that you upgrade your diamond helmet first and boots second since they tend to break sooner than chest plates and leggings. In this configuration, they still break before the diamond leggings and chest plates, so you don't really gain any significant durability advantage beyond this point. But wait, the more pieces of netherite armor you wear, the longer every piece of armor will last due to its armor toughness value being greater than diamond. This means you gain a very marginal benefit in the efficiency of your armor's durability loss by wearing a full set of netherite armor. I tested how long it takes for a netherite helmet to break when combined with a full diamond set versus a full netherite set and lasted only slightly less than 8% longer, which equates to only a few seconds of increased lifespan under constant attack. In terms of knockback resistance, a player wearing full netherite armor will take little or no knockback from most attacks. However, this is a double-edged sword when it comes to player versus player combat scenarios. While reducing knockback from crystal and minecart explosions is useful, it's often better to take knockback in certain situations as it makes it easier to distance yourself from your opponent. In full netherite armor, it becomes a lot easier for another player to crit chain you and more difficult for you to escape. The amount of knockback reduction scales with the number of netherite armor pieces you are wearing so you can get the best of both worlds by wearing a combination of diamond and netherite armor, depending on how much knockback you want to take. So, should you choose to use netherite or diamond? The truth is that it comes down entirely to personal preference. Mathematically, netherite is slightly better in terms of damage resistance and durability and reduces a ridiculous amount of knockback. However, diamond armor is still a lot cheaper to obtain, especially in the new 1.20 update, and still holds up against netherite armor despite very marginal differences between the two. It depends entirely on your playstyle. If you prefer to have increased agility in the form of knockback, combined with a lower cost of losing your gear set, a mostly diamond armor set might be the best for you. Netherite is excellent for players who like to get up close, tank damage, resist explosion knockback, and just in general endure longer conflicts. Depending on where you are on this spectrum, you should include more or less netherite in your armor set to fit your needs. 1.20 added 16 new armor designs with 10 different materials and colors each. Now normally I wouldn't go too deeply into this topic because I thought trims wouldn't be very useful beyond cosmetics, but as it turns out, they are. Look at this image. It's pretty easy to see that there are three players in the forest waiting to attack you. Just kidding, there's four. By using the ancient city trim template and an emerald, you can cover as much of your armor as possible with this green texture making it super difficult to see in a forest. If you look directly at it, it's easy to tell, but if a player using invisibility is wearing this armor standing still, it's almost impossible to detect them in your peripheral vision. Also, it looks pretty cool. You can use this armor trim in different colors to effectively make biome-specific camouflage depending on which environment you're trying to 
blend in with. Unenchanted armor is better than nothing against low tier mobs, but is far from effective against bigger threats such as in-game bosses or even other players. You probably know already that you want Unbreaking 3 and Mending to make your armor last long term. This part is easy. However, I guarantee you don't fully understand how exactly each of these next enchantments work, and which are essential to creating the best set of armor possible. You may be surprised to hear this, but Death Strider can actually make you travel significantly slower in water. Normally this enchantment increases your movement speed in water, however for some odd reason when using a trident with Riptide, it significantly slows your movement and reduces the distance you travel with each throw. If you plan on using a trident, you can easily surprise your opponents by not using Death Strider on your boots to gain a significant edge in water combat. There are several other notable enchantments like Feather Falling, Respiration, and Aqua Affinity, but most of you probably already know to use these when possible so we won't be going too deeply into those. However, Thorns is an enchantment that has gotten a lot of controversy for several years now. While it does do damage and knockback to any mob or player that hits you, it has a tendency to degrade your armor's durability significantly with each hit, causing it to break several times faster than it would normally. Because of this, Thorns is left out of most players' gear sets. As it turns out, if you put Thorns only on your chestplate and leggings, the helmet will still break first, essentially meaning you'll still last as long as everyone else in the fight while still having the benefits of Thorns. You will probably need to use a bit more experience point to mend your chestplate and leggings each time, so it's really up to you to decide whether it's worth the extra experience cost. When it comes to protection enchantments, there are several to choose from, and more often than not, you'll end up using the wrong ones. We'll start off with projectile protection. This enchantment reduces damage from projectiles, but it does not provide any protection against other form of damage such as fire, explosions, or melee attacks. You can use a shield to completely negate projectile damage anyway, so I would not recommend this enchantment except for in very specific use cases. The far more common protection for enchantment provides moderate protection from all kinds of damage and is by far the most effective against melee attacks from mobs and players. As the name would suggest, fire protection provides the best protection against fire damage, increasing the amount of time you can survive in lava by around 45 seconds. If you have food to regenerate health with, you can easily survive indefinitely in lava. This enchantment is a must-have for any kind of nether exploration. If you're tired of losing your hardcore world to a single creeper explosion, blast protection is for you. As the name implies, blast protection significantly reduces the damage done by any kind of explosion. One problem though, on each piece of armor, you can only choose one of these protection enchantments. What combination of enchantments is best? All of these enchantments are very useful in a variety of situations. Logically, we should make one set of armor that has all these specialty enchantments, right? The issue with this approach is found within the game's calculation of armor protection values against different types of damage. We can visualize this concept with the simple diagram you may have seen in an older video of mine on the topic. These three columns represent different types of damage. Each block in the column represents four possible slots for protection buffs when an armor enchantment value is calculated. When you add one piece of armor enchanted with protection 4, one row is filled in, as protection provides an armor buff of 4 in all types of damage. When you include a specialty enchantment such as fire or blast protection, you'll fill only two spots in for that specific type of damage. If we apply this to the idea of using all four types of protection enchantments, each on a different piece of armor, we can see that this provides significantly less overall protection than a homogenous set of protection 4 armor. Protection 4 is a jack of all trades and is the most effective in mitigating melee damage in player versus player combat, but as you can see, we still have room for improvement. Let's say you're netherite mining or just exploring the nether and you really, really don't want to die in lava. By replacing one piece of protection 4 with fire protection 4, you can have the maximum amount of fire protection the game will allow, at the expense of some other areas of protection. Similarly, you can replace one piece of a prop 4 set with blast protection in order to have the best possible protection from explosion damage. This is very useful against TNT and end crystals, which could very easily kill you otherwise. I generally like to apply these specialty enchantments to the leggings as I often remove my chest plate in order to use an elytra. Here's the hard part though. How exactly do we get all of these enchantments? Probably the best way is to use villagers, but these take a while to set up. If you want to know how to do that, check out my video on the topic, but for now we're going to be focusing on using the enchantment table. So let's say I have a few pieces of netherite armor I want to enchant, some lapis, and a few levels. You're going to want to put your armor in the enchantment table and look at what kind of results you get. Make sure to cycle through each individual piece before you actually select anything. A lot of this just comes down to instinct, just being able to look at this trade that you're getting and guess what's going to come with it. I took a big gamble here and went with Aqua Affinity, and luckily enough for me, it came with Protection 4 and Unbreaking 3, so that's like an almost perfect helmet. Right now I'm getting Protection 4 on the chest plate, but just to be sure, I want to make sure I'm not getting any better trades elsewhere. Fire Protection 4, again, that's good if you want it. 
but I'm just going to cycle through. Notice how I'm going for the lowest trade when there's nothing on the loot table that I want. Keep in mind that this method works best when you're doing it with netherite armor since netherite armor has a better chance of getting protection for an unbreaking 3 than diamond armor. Unfortunately, that's all we have time for today. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe, it helps a lot, and also be sure to check out the new Roland Earth SMP using the IP play.roland.us on Java in Bedrock Edition. That's all for now, and I'll see you guys next time.